We got a high quality single player Star Wars experience with no microtransactions from EA in 2019. Excuse me while I pick up my jaw off the floor. I'm all for piling on when they've made mistakes, but they've allowed Respawn to create a wonderful solo journey boasting excellent combat, thrilling set pieces and platforming reminiscent of Uncharted, Metroid style exploration, progression reminiscent of Dark Souls, a soundtrack fitting of the franchise, and a charming narrative fitting of the Star Wars name. It's remarkable how many popular concepts they were able to fuse together while keeping the game's identity focused. If there's any hiccup, I'm sad to say it's the quality of the bosses. When they hit, they hit big, but many of them are ham-fisted duds disgracing the title of boss. You can expect me to sprinkle my thoughts here and there on their quality, but today's ranking is geared toward difficulty. As a final note, I played through the game on Jedi Master, which is what I assumed to be the normal difficulty. With all that said, here are the Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order bosses ranked from easiest to hardest. Number 16, Null Chance. This is straight bait. Just like the fans of old who collectively dropped their panties anytime Boba Fett appeared on screen, I was screaming with glee when I was ambushed by a bounty hunter. Turns out it was a scripted fight to get you captured. And to get to round two, you have to run a gauntlet of decently tough enemies to wear you down. At that point, Null Chance swoops in to finish you off and fails miserably. I have to think that the beast wearing out your resources is an intentional effort to make Null seem difficult, but you can't put perfume on dog shit and expect it to smell like roses. In Fallen Order, you you can deflect laser blasts with a well-timed deflection. Think of it like Sekiro's deflect versus block mechanics. At this point, you've had loads of stormtroopers to practice on, so when her primary offense is taking pot shots you can deflect back, it's about as scary as your standard stormtrooper. Once you deflect, you can knock her down and then strike away with your saber, obliterating her paltry health. Even better, trap her so she can't launch up again and it's over in a matter of seconds. She has missiles and a flamethrower, but who cares? She'll be dead before it makes any difference. I would say she's handily the easiest boss, but while she earns that honor, We've got plenty more walks through the park to take today. Number 15, ATST. If it weren't for Null Chance, this would be peak easiness. Despite its heavy artillery, it's another glorified stormtrooper. If you're good at parrying blasts, then you are golden. Every few you pull off, you'll get a stun and consequently a window to unload melee, taking massive chunks of HP. It'll toss out shot grenades near itself to keep you from staying in for too long, which is smart, but it's not hard to back off and deflect more lasers for another opening. Similar to Null Chance, it also has missiles, but they can be evaded effortlessly by strafing. It's pretty mindless, but it at least felt badass to take down an ATST with such ease. The pilot even pays you a visit afterward, but don't expect him to pose any more of a threat. Cool set piece and an understandably simple boss for the early game, but that doesn't change its well-deserved spot near the bottom. Number 14, Nidak Alpha. In my time with them, it was difficult to even ascertain a difference between the Alpha and the normal Nidak, so regardless, my strategy was the same here. Block often, attempt parries when confident, and strike away at any window you get. Doing this, the fight was over in the blink of an eye. This Alpha is the first in a handful of buffed basic enemy bosses you'll find on each planet, and their difficulty varies largely based on a few factors, the most important of which is arena size. You've got tons of room to work with here, allowing you to slow the Nidak with the force and heal at any time. Sure, you've got limited force and heals, but this is in the late game when you should have the upgrade where each hill refills your entire force bar. This makes the margin for error massive. The only reason he gets any more credit than the previous two is his damage output. If you whiff and get greedy, he might get a KO in, but hypotheticals that didn't happen in reality aren't going to get him any more recognition than a well-deserved cellar dweller. Number 13, Rabbit Yotas. Another planetary fauna boss that is a beefed up and more aggressive version of its basic counterparts. The Yotas hits like a truck and often, hence the Rabbit name. He can easily wombo combo you to death. He even wrecked me once because I was being lazy expecting an easy victory like the Alpha Nidak. But once I took it seriously, it was a matter of dodge, slow, and then massacre. Its only advantage over the Nidak is that it actually killed me once. Congrats to you, Yotas. Not many bosses on the list were able to pull off that feat. Still, it was more carelessness than design. The Yotas his arm swings are great tells, and he has low HP relative to his stature. Another piece of cake to add to our growing bakery of ease. Number 12, Security Droid. After the initial E3 showcase ending with a droid sneaking up on you in a spooky moment, I assumed we'd be in for a wild ride. Not so much. It throws punches and grabs you with impressive range. They do solid damage if they hit, and the droid is persistent. That said, you can find so many openings between downtime, easy to parry blows, and hitting it from behind during a missed attack. It's almost as if the game doesn't take it too seriously as a boss because this fight is an introduction into an enemy that becomes standard throughout the rest of your playthrough. Even then, you can hack them to brawl each other for your entertainment. Of all the bosses so far, I think the margin for error is the smallest here with its high damage, solid speed, and small corridor to trap you in. But I don't think it's enough to make it anything more than a minimal speed bump. Number 11, Clunk. 
33% of the list down and you'd think we'd be getting toward average territory, but nope, we're still cruising down easy street. This difficulty clunker has a herky-jerk moveset that is a little hard to predict and packs a strong enough wallop to go through your blocks, which is rare. It also has multiple unblockable attacks indicated by the enemy glowing red that pack quite a punch. That said, it's slow, easy to heal, and it doesn't have a lot of HP. The only bits of challenge come from the damage output and forcing dodges over blocking. For our first bounty hunter boss, he's definitely the easiest of a not so intimidating bunch. Number 10, Flatak and Pango Tutti. All right, I'll give it to this duo. They caught me by surprise and it put me in a rough spot. They ambush you on a normally safe run back to the ship and my guard was especially low since I just beat a significant story boss moments ago. The moment it took me to get my bearings was by far harder than anything we've seen thus far, but once you have it, it falls in line with the pile of pathetic corpses we've stacked up to this point. They have two unblockables, one a bum rush with a shield and the other a strong laser blast which you've seen from plenty of stormtrooper commanders. Other than that, they shoot basic lasers and fire off flashbangs that fog up your screen. Each one is right up there with null chance in terms of challenge, but together they pose a larger threat, especially if you didn't rest beforehand to restock your healing stims. The boxes in the middle are pretty clutch for splitting their aggro though, and it makes it plenty realistic to make it a 1v1 quickly. The element of surprise in their gang setup definitely does them difficulty favors, but their low HP and arena do you enough favors to keep this toward the middle of the road. Number 9, Crusher Hagop and JDH3, Slay Jax and Grand Moff Nohog. Two more sets of gang bounty hunters that ambush you, and from what I could tell, they were no different despite taking place on separate planets. The only real difference from the previous entry is that Clunk takes a spot of one of the hunters. That does make it a bit harder since Clunk is a more challenging foe than one of the humanoid bounty hunters, but it isn't a whole order of magnitude more difficult. In fact, I actually found that since the robot was so slow, I could often YOLO greed kill the human hunter and then it's a 1v1 Clunk fight again. Still, his damage output is noticeable higher so they get the slight edge in number eight. Number 8, Bing and the Maestro. The final of the bounty hunter combos, this time with the humanoid hunter being replaced by the Null Chance variant. Of the three, this is definitely the hardest because having Null take flight adds an extra dimension that makes it harder to split their aggro. So I focused her extremely hard and thanks to how pathetic she is, it was no problem to quickly slice her down before I lost. After that, it's yet another clunk fight. He always gets some good licks in due to my greed, but it's nothing I can't heal up and fight back against. Tougher combo, but still not tough enough. I'm not kidding when I say we still haven't even reached the difficulty average for bosses in gaming as a whole, but it's a solid effort at least. Number 7, Second Sister. Finally, in a game with Jedi and the title, we reach our first lightsaber duel. All the purge troopers along the way scratch that itch, but there's nothing like the real thing. You get a tease in the intro level, but it's nothing more than a few blows before a cutscene. This time you get the opportunity to fight until she reaches half health, and she makes every bit count. She epitomizes every enemy and boss to this point, both on the list and in the game. They attack relentlessly, and you have to handle what they dish out through blocking, dodging, and parries. But in her case, it's elevated well above the competition so far. She has loads of different lightsaber combos to watch out for, including a few unblockables, and she can throw you off with her force push. There's no single particular move that is troublesome, it's more so the sum of its parts. That said, while on paper it seemed very difficult, it wasn't as much in practice. You can use slow on her to get easy heals, there's more than enough radius to do it, and her unblockables, particularly the jump slam, actually work to your advantage to dodge and get good counters in. That and I found her blows to mostly be easy to deflect, giving me a clear advantage in the fight. The final blow against her is having to only take half her HP makes the fight rather short. So it's a bit of a give and take. She certainly asked the most of the player thus far, but I don't think it was particularly difficult to meet that challenge. So while I do think she does show signs of difficulty life, it's still not enough to hit the average line. Number 6, Ogdo Bogdo. Like the Alpha Nidak and Rabid Yotas, this is a more deadly version of the bloated toads you'll find around Bagano. Obviously this ranks quite a bit higher than they did, and I'm sure you're wondering why. First, Ogdo attacks at an absurd rate, leaving little downtime. The arena is large, but it's deceptively easy to get cornered. It also does enough damage to kill me in two hits, and that's because I fought it in the first two hours of the game. I'm fairly certain you were meant to come back later, but I was insistent on fighting this optional boss on my first go. It was all a matter of strategy and willpower. The tactic guide says use the force to grab his tongue and slice it with the lightsaber. Okay, spit tongue, slow it down, then what? All right, buddy, I guess that's not how this is gonna work. His outer shell is resistant to the lightsaber strikes, but that's not to say it can't be killed that way. In fact, once I realized you only need to quick step in its face with generous timing to evade, I managed to ravage it in under 30 seconds. But thanks to me facing him early on with minimal upgrades and a limited understanding of the combat system, he did pose a commendable challenge for the early game. 
Number 5, Gorgara. I waited desperately for a boss like this to show up. With so many retreads of basic enemies and underwhelming bosses, I was practically on my knees begging for something unique that packs some semblance of challenge. Gorgara finally delivered on that dream, though sadly it is the only beast boss to do so. When the fight started, I actually thought it was going to be another joke in a long string of punchlines. It did a very repetitive loop of an unblockable wing slam and a sweep that was laughably easy to evade. Then it mixed in the rest of its move pool. It flies up and fires Sonic Rays at you, slams down creating a shockwave, and it'll charge across the arena twice. None are hard to dodge and have great counters like slowing the charge or jumping the shockwave and taking the free window to damage the bat, but at least these are a solid range of moves to keep you guessing. It does have a sizable health pool, hits pretty hard if you get caught out of rhythm, and as a result can become a decent endurance battle. It ends with a flashy cinematic sequence where you zip around to mount the bat. It is a bit janky to measure your distance, and I wish there was more participation from the player on the damage front. If you miss the bat, you get an immediate do-over as well, so despite it being cool, it's mostly going through the motions. When you add it all up, it's handily one of the best bosses in the game, and with its wide range of moves, it at least starts to crank up the difficulty dial enough to put out more than mere static. Number 4, Albino Wishhook. Of all the planetary reskins, the spider takes the cake as the hardest for two reasons. The arena is too small, and the spider has absurd range and damage matched with turnstile tracking. It has a blockable bite, web spit that can wrap around and slow your movement, but the real terror are the unblockables. Those are the moves that track you like a homing missile and shave off more than half of your health easily. When you mix that in with its high aggression, it quickly becomes a challenge to heal and can lead to a frustrating experience. It's certainly not a boss that I enjoyed, but whether I agree with the methodology or not, it at least poses a notable challenge I would consider to be the first above the average in the game. That said, like with the Toad, all it takes is stringing together a few sequences of good evasion and aggression of your own to squash this oversized arachnid. Number 3, Terran Malakos. Another lightsaber duel, this time against a dual wielder that looks like a yoked Surian McKellen. I dig it. And the fight. I really dig the fight. First off, this is by far the most stunning arena to this point. The stage is set tremendously well, and I like that you have a bit of connection between he and Cal before the fight begins. When it does, you'll quickly realize to land blows on him effectively, you'll need to parry. Blocking works, but downing his stamina is the main path to breaking his HP down. In fairness, I forgot my recent added ability to dual wield to break through guards, and I think it would have made a difference here as we'll discuss with a later boss. Either way, I had a blast parrying his attacks to find openings and striking a way to whittle down more of his stamina. It felt like a battle of wits purely between lightsabers. Well, except for when he throws boulders at you. That shit hurts. He'll also throw his lightsabers in tandem and even throws one up out of your sight sometimes while attacking, which can be a doozy to handle. Personally, I blocked and waited for it to come back down. He'll force push you back a lot to prepare these attacks, which makes closing the distance valuable, but at the same time, it gives you a good window to heal. His few unblockables are overall easy to deal with, but since parrying is the emphasis of this fight, you run the risk of him leaving a false opening with him tanking your counter and smashing through your HP. Don't be fooled and keep the parries up. The difficulty wasn't otherworldly, it only took me two tries, but like I said with the second sister, this fight asked the most of me to this point in the game. And if you have trouble timing parries, I could see this being quite a bit harder. Altogether against weak competition, he does more than enough to lock down a spot in the top three. Number two, Ninth Sister. This is a brutish follow-up to your earlier fight with the second sister. In contrast to the graceful movement second employed, Nine's tactics are far more forceful and savage. She has a four-piece lightsaber combo, can toss her saber, and has a number of unblockable attacks including a thrust, a jump attack, a bull rush, and a sweep. The unblockables do a great job of making sure you're ready to dodge in between your swings, blocks, and parries and prevents the fight from being too one-dimensional. Some of them are great counter opportunities such as the jumping slam. Others such as the bull rush I found difficult to defend, let alone counter counter because the tracking is extremely sticky. As the fight continues, you'll get a button mashing sequence and then she'll take a breather to unleash her second saber. This made the relatively easy warm up look like child's play. I found the dual blades to be way harder to deflect as they play tricks on your eyes, making the timing feel very erratic. She also gains some new unblockables here that look very similar to other attacks, so it's more than enough to throw off your game. Slow was a lifesaver in terms of healing as always, and it really helped to have the upgrade where your healing replenish your force for the sake of always being able to stop the fight if it was getting too intense. Once you've died once, she also skips a cutscene and pulls out the dual saber in an instant, which can completely disrupt your rhythm. There were a few times where I tried to parry and completely failed getting sliced by that big combo. I found out later it was much better to block the whole thing as long as you can manage your stamina wisely. Overall, it was an immensely satisfying fight. Though some of her attacks resemble other enemies in the game, she had plenty of unique ones that matched her stature, and the satisfaction of winning a lightsaber duel is immense. But there's one final duel that takes difficulty to the far ends of the dark side and the number one hardest boss in Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, Trilla Sidari. 
Despite all the monsters we face to this point, Trilla runs away with the award for most ferocious beast in Fallen Order. Her feral attacks are too much for you to block for more than two or three hits. You either need to parry some blows, attack enough yourself to break her, or use the force and get some breathing room. Won't matter though. Fight doesn't last long enough because they keep being a tease. Fortunately, the main course isn't far off. Though I feel like I should mention the gauntlet you endure to get there would rival for the hardest in the game if it had a health bar. With the appetizer in mind, I thought I was in for a world of hurt. But though this is definitely the game's hardest boss, I found one strategy that really broke her. Slow in combination with your dual strikes is OP. Just wait for a window to slow, do a dual strike, keep hitting for more HP shaved, and repeat. I ran out of force to use and then had to duke it out myself, but that was only because I made it through so efficiently without losing health. Once you do, you should have the upgrade to get full force upon healing. And that made it easy to continue ripping in with the same one-two punch of slow and dual strikes. Even so, it takes a modicum of skill to figure that out and take advantage of the windows. She was by far the hardest for me to parry of any lightsaber wielding boss, she did tons of damage to your stamina which made it feel impossible to stay in and block, and her unblockables threw me for the biggest loop of the bunch. Going blow for blow with her was a rough assignment, but her weakness to slow makes it more realistic to win without the difficulty spiking to astronomical levels. She earns her spot of the most difficult boss in Fallen Order, and if they ever give her a higher resistance to slow, she will become a true Sith to fear. But since she couldn't completely rise to the challenge as it stands today, at least there's someone who could. And the real hardest boss in Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, Darth Vader. Difficulty level, impossible. Unbeatable. You can't divide by zero, people. The numbers don't lie, and they spell disaster for you. You're goddamn right they do. Vader is like a roided out sports pro walking into a pickup game with average Joes. He's about to end their whole career and look cool doing it. As far as the fight here, Seer gets yeeted into the lava pit, Trilla gets fucking wrecked, and Cal barely manages to distract Vader long enough to run away. But my twisted ass turned on him in those final moments and was rooting on Vader like, yeah boy, demolish those Jedi. While Vader will always have a commanding presence in the original trilogy, there was never any sizable displays of power due to technical limitations of the time and possibly a different idea of power scaling. Well, in this, he goes unhinged like a slasher villain and massacres everything in his path. It was one of the best moments in the game, and though Cal clearly stood no chance against him, it makes me hopeful that one day we'll get a boss fight of Malakos' caliber against Darth Vader in the future. The bosses in Jedi Fallen Order show promise. There were a lot of throwaways to inflate the boss count, but for each one of those, there was a unique and engaging experience that followed, even if they weren't the most challenging. I still had a blast with the game overall, and highly suggest anyone who loves quality action adventure games in Star Wars to give it a go. With that, I want to thank you all for watching today, much love to you, and I'll see you in the next video.